All right, guys, today we are going to be going over lesson 94. Now, there's a lot in lesson 94 that we're going to be practicing today. The first thing we're going to be solving is how to solve two step word problems about the cost of items, how to solve two step word problems relating to the ages of people, how to solve two step word problems about perimeter and area of a square, how to find points on a number line and how to solve two-step equations that use variables like x and y. So get out your whiteboard or a piece of paper so that you can follow along with me as we solve these problems. All right, so our first problem says, Carlos got paid for five pounds of apples with a $10 bill. He got back six dollars. What was the cost of each pound of apples? So we already know that he bought five pounds of apples. He paid with a ten dollar bill and he got back six dollars. So we need to take this in a couple of steps. The first step that we need to take is we need to figure out how much did Carlos actually pay? Because if he gave the cashier a ten dollar bill but he got six dollars back, then he didn't actually pay ten dollars. He actually paid ten dollars minus six dollars tells us that he actually paid four dollars for all of his apples. Now the problem asks us what was the cost of each pound of apples. Now we know that the keyword each means that we need to divide. So because it says each and we need to divide, we need to divide the amount that he paid by the pounds of apples. We know that he bought five pounds of apples and he paid four dollars total. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide four dollars divided by five pounds of apples. So we know five does not fit into four, but five does fit into forty eight times. Five times eight is forty. Bring down the zero and five fits into zero, zero times. What that tells us is Carlos paid 80 cents for each pound of apples. All right, so our next problem says, Nancy paid for four pounds of peaches with a $5 bill. She got back $3. What was the cost of each pound of, of peaches? So. The first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much did Nancy actually pay. She paid with a $5 bill and she got back $3. So to find out how much she really paid, we do $5 minus $3 and we get $2. Now we know that Nancy paid $2 for her four pounds of peaches, but it asks us how much did she pay for each pound of peaches. So we need to divide, because we know each is divide. So we're going to take our cost of $2, and we're going to divide it by how many pounds of peaches she bought, which is 4. So we do. How many times does 4 fit into 2? 0. But 4 fits into 20 five times. 4 times 5 is 20. Bring down the 0. And we know 4 fits into 0 zero times. We add our decimal and our dollar sign, that means that each pound of peaches cost Nancy 50 cents. All right, our next problem says the perimeter of this square is 12 inches. What is the area of the square? So the first thing we need to figure out is if we know the perimeter is 12 inches, we need to know how much is each side of our square. Now we know a square has four equal sides. So if my perimeter is 12, I need to divide that by four to figure out what each side is. And I know that four fits into 12 three times. So when I think about this square, each side is going to be three inches. Now the problem asks me, what is the area? So to find my area, I know that area equals side squared, or I can think of it just like side times side. That means each side is three. So I can fill that in as three squared, or three times three. That means that the 
area of this square is 9 inches squared. All right, what if the perimeter of this square is 20 centimeters? I want to find out what is the area of this square. Well, I know that my square has four equal sides, so I'm going to divide 20 divided by 4. When I divide 20 divided by 4, I know that that is 5, which means that each side is 5 centimeters. Now, to find our area, just like before, we do side squared or side times side. That means that this area is 5 squared, which is the same as 5 times 5. That means that my area is 25 centimeters squared. All right, here's a new type of problem. Jim is 5 years older than Allie. Allie is 2 years younger than Blanca. Blanca is 9 years old. How old is Jim? So what I need to figure out in this problem is how old is Jim? But the problem has given me a lot of information about other people that I need to use to figure out how old Jim is. So I'm going to look and see if there's anything that tells me exactly how old someone is. And I see that. It says Blanca is 9 years old. So I can immediately fill in that Blanca is 9. Now, the next thing that I read is Jim is 5 years older than Allie. But I don't know anything about Allie yet. Allie is two years younger than Blanca. Well, I know that Blanca is nine. And if Allie is two years younger than Blanca, that means that Allie is seven. The last thing I can figure out now is how old Jim is. And it says Jim is five years older than Allie. So if I know that Allie is seven, I'm going to add five and get that Jim is 12 years old. All right, our next problem says, Robert is 10 years younger than John, and John is two years younger than Jenny. If Robert is 13 years old, how old is Jenny? So the first thing I need to do is figure out, is there anybody whose age I already know? And according to the problem, it says, Robert is 13 years old. So I can start by filling in that Robert is 13. Then I need to look at the rest of the information that I have. Robert is 10 years younger than John, which means if Robert is younger than John, John is older. So I'm going to add 10 years to Robert's age, which means that John is 23. John is two years younger than Jenny. Well, that means that Jenny is older, so I need to add two years to John, and I will get that John is 25 years old. All right, now I have a number line problem. When we try to solve a number line problem, we need to figure out what our number line is counting by. So we always start by going from one number to the next. And in this case, we can go from zero to 100. And we count our jumps. We need to take one, two, three, four jumps to get from zero to 100. And I know that I can count by 25 four times to go from 0 to 100. 25, 50, 75, 100. That means that I already know that A is 25. Then, using my knowledge that we're counting by 25s, I can figure out what B is. I'm going to start at 100 this time, and I have 125, 150, and 175. So now I know that B is 175. The last one I want to figure out is C. To go from 200, I'm going to jump 25s again. 200 and then 225. So C is 225. In this problem, I still need to figure out how much I'm counting by because it's a number line problem. So I'm going to start by counting my jumps from one number to the next. And in this one, I only see a 0 and a 100. So I'm going to start at the 0, and I'm going to jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10. That means that I know that there are 10 jumps from 0 to 100. And I know that if I count by 10s, I can get from 0 to 100 if I count 10 times. That means 10, 20, 30. Oh, I'm correct. So now I'm going to count how many jumps it takes to get to A. I have 10, 20. That means that A is 20. To get to B, go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That means that B is 70. Now to get to C, I don't have to start at 0. I can start at 100. And I can count 110, 120. That means that C is 120. The last type of problem we're going to talk about today is called a two-step equation. What we have here is y equals 2x plus 3. That means that we have two letters, y and x, that we need to solve. Well, this problem has already told us that x equals 5. That means that we're now trying to solve for y. The way that we do that is we plug in our x. So that's what this is what that means. y equals 2x plus 3. Now we know when a number and a letter touch, like 2x, we want to multiply. So we're going to do y equals 2 times 5 plus 3. So I'm going to say y equals 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3. That means I can finally solve and say y equals 13. Alright, our next problem says y equals 4x plus 2 when x equals 6. So, I now know y equals 4x, remember when the number and a letter touch, we mean multiply. So we're going to do 4 times x, which is 6, plus 2. That means y equals 24 plus 2, which means y equals 26. All right, our next problem says y equals 7x minus 4. Well, we know that we need to solve for y because x equals 3. So y equals 7, and our x is 3, and we need to multiply 7 times 3 minus 4. Now we know y equals 21 minus 4, and when we solve 21 minus 4, we find out that y equals 17.